So the warm up is going to be five minutes on the bike at a leisurely pace, enough to break a sweat, create a little bit of leg burn, uh, wake your, wake yourself up. When you're when you're warming up, one thing you want to try to do is get the initial what I call bad burn out of there. Is when you first start moving, usually it hurts like right away. And then you'll hit a point where it kind of dips. The pain kind of goes away. That's what we want to get through with our warm up. Like the legs are on fire right away. You've probably noticed this when you've climbed a, a flight of stairs and it made you out of breath and your legs burned and you're at work and you're like, you're confused, like do I even train? And that's, that's normal because the initial dip in the oxygen in your bloodstream has to be replaced with a consistent higher heart rate. So after your heart rate's been up at a higher rate for five minutes, then the burn should feel less, okay? So that's what I'm trying to get through with the first five minute ride on the bike, okay? So after that, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna prep for the workout. The workout's gonna have dumbbell snatches and bike, and it, which is posterior chain work and sh shoulder work. So to hit that posterior chain, and also work on my balance, I'm going to hit some uh, single leg Romanian deadlifts. So I'm going to take the dumbbell and as, as the good posture as I can, I'm not, I'm not going to round out, but I'm also not too worried about it because I'm not going heavy, I'm just warming up and stretching out. I'm going to come down and bend the knee slightly, touch the shoe, stay on one leg. Okay, never let this leg touch the right leg. I'm gonna touch it again. Okay, I'm gonna do 10 on each leg. Yeah. And then I'm gonna switch. Okay, if you wanna get real fancy with this, kick back as far as you can and come through here. Okay? And keep this, and try to finish like in a running position. It's a challenge to keep your balance, and that's a good thing. That's an added bonus. It's going to work on the calf and the ankle. All right, so that's five minutes there. You're going to do three rounds of excuse me, the single leg Romanian deadlift, 10 on each leg, combined with the Cobra to downward dog, which we covered in the last workout. All right. Stretch the back and the, and the psoas, hip flexors. Just stretch the wrist, work on your elbow extension, and then push into the downward dog. Okay. And stretch your uh, hands and calves with this one. Open those shoulders because you're going to need to open those shoulders for the dumbbell snatch. Okay, come down, cobra. And you're holding each position, the cobra and the downward dog, for about five seconds. 35 seconds. Get a good stretch. So that's the warm up. Now I am. All right, let's go over a dumbbell snatch. You want to touch the dumbbell between the legs. You're going to fire the hip. It's going to be straight before this elbow bends, before that, that dumbbell takes off. And then you're going to throw it overhead. Here. Off the hip, throw overhead. Okay, you can do kind of a lazy swing motion where you bend the elbow and throw it up overhead. Okay, or you can do a strict snatch motion where you bend high pole and swing it overhead. Whichever one you prefer. And when you're repping it out in the Metcon, you can switch to the other arm on the way down. Okay, tap the ground, right back up. All 
All right, it's not a full squat. You don't have to go down here. And it's not a straight leg movement. Okay? Bend those knees, get in the power position. Tap between the feet, throw it overhead. This other arm out here stays away from the leg. It's very tempting to brace yourself here. Don't do that. Okay? Or you can do it like this. And that's the dumbbell snatch. We're going to do a couplet where we combine that with the bike. So you're going to do the bike first, and then you head over here and do a, a set of dumbbell snatches here. And it's alternating each time you do it. Okay, and I'll post the, the workout down below with the exact numbers. 20 dumbbell snatches for four hours. Half a mile. Is that a, that'd be a decent amount of work for anybody. So anybody that's ready for it can push themselves. And then we can scale up or down from there. Okay. But if I hit this hard myself, it'll be a good smoke. Whatever, whatever, say you're on a bike like this you're not familiar with. Whatever resistance you pick on the first round, stay with that resistance and just try to go harder or maintain what you did on the first round. Don't worry about comparing it to something you've done in the past as far as the PR goes. So I have it on level 11. I'm going to keep it on 11 for all four rounds. Cruise at about 90. 97 RPMs. I also want to try to maintain that every round. Don't let that fall off. That's my intensity. That's half mile. 20 of these. Should you pace yourself or go as fast as you can? About as fast as you can go. It's a short sprint. So light, heavy, or medium? Light dumbbell. I'm trying to count. Sorry. <laughs> what number am I? It's ten. It's like two. <laughs> One round. Round two. If you have to restart the bike every time, it's no big deal. You get a little breather while you're setting it back up, and you can just go harder. What if you're really tired? Should you rest? Yeah, as you figure out your own fitness level and or hit it too hard, you can take pauses, you can break it up. Like you two, get, two minutes? Tired. For example, I'm holding 97 RPMs. If my legs hit a wall, I can just cruise for a second. 
like this. And then hit it hard again. So not not stop for two minutes. So don't rest. Stop for two minutes. And then every once in a while too, test the higher gear. Like I just ramped it up to 105, 110. See how that felt. See if I think I can hold that. If I can, that's my new, that's my new spot. If it, I hit a wall right away, I'll back it back down to 97. Ooh. Oh, whoa. Getting real here. Those are not hickeys, by the way. So, 105 seems doable. I'm gonna try to hold that. I don't feel like I'm in the wall. It burns. <laughs> so you can make it as hard or as easy as you can? Yep. Now in the fourth round, you just sell out. Let's see if I can hold over 105.
Go, 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 go. Oh my goodness, it was 10.45. So, now you have a benchmark. You have some numbers to work with. And if I do this again, I know I'll hold 105 RPMs at level 11. And I know I can go non-stop. I'm broken, no brakes. And I'll try to beat that time. And when, a couple months down the road, when I can crush that time, that's what matters. That's how I know I'm more fit. I keep, and that's the magic. Those are the most important numbers to track, as opposed to the least important numbers to track like calories and macros okay I don't care and you shouldn't care either how many calories I burned on that it's insignificant I don't care where my heart rate was it was up <laughs> you know I care where my fitness is and there's really only one way to measure that and that's with your power output the faster and harder I go on this Metcon, the higher my average power output is. Okay, so if I finish it in nine minutes in a month or two, I know I can maintain a higher power output, which is the same as maintaining a higher work capacity, which means I could uh, translate that to the real world. I could lay more bricks bale more hay, get more work done, and not, not, uh, not be an invalid. <laughs> get straight to the point when I'm out of breath. <laughs>